Martin Savage was telling us earlier they expected to speed up the reporting here because this had been one of the slowest places to start. They're up to 40% right now. You see John Ossoff at 68%, Pastor Warnock at 68%. This is absolutely critical as the rest of this vote comes in from, from the Savannah area in Chatham County. is absolutely critical for the Democrats to maintain a big advantage. And I'll explain to you why in just a minute. We still have absolutely nothing out of Forsyth County. Of the 159 counties in the state of Georgia, this is 11th in terms of population. So not giant, but, but it is significant, and it is solidly Republican. If you go back to the 2020 presidential election, Mr. Sterling, who we just spoke to there, this is one of the counties where there were long lines, where people, a lot of people in line when the polls closed. Uh, the expectation is a lot of those people are Republicans. If you look at what happened in 2020, and if you look at Georgia's history, we still have absolutely nothing from Forsyth County. So if you are the Democrats and you're looking at a 7,000 vote lead there, and a 35,000 vote there, and you know there are a lot, of Repu a lot of Republican votes to come from Forsyth County, and then a modest number of Republican votes to come from other places, like Coffee County here. I am not Go surprised that Warnock has a bigger lead compared to Ossoff. 6,000 votes. 6,000 votes, right? I not said, a giant number. I said even before statewide. that Warnock was going to be the one carrying Ossoff. Two reasons. One, uh, black representation matters, especially in a race where, like, black voter turnout is going to greatly uh, swing the outcomes. Two, uh, actually, yeah, that's uh, that's that's a big part of it. And and well, the second reason is because Loeffler is like less less liked than uh, Purdue is. So people would people could be less inclined to vote for Leffler than they are to vote for Purdue. Like she's really bad. Remember when we were watching the debates between Leffler and uh, and and Warnock? What did I say? Doug Collins would have been a better fucking choice to be an appointment there than Kelly Leffler. Like Kelly Leffler's appointment is truly a burden for the uh, Republican Party there. She is so horrifically unlikable. has lead 787 votes. 787 votes for David Perdue over John Ossoff, the Democrat, 50%, 50%. No, that doesn't mean people are voting for Warnock and Perdue. That means that people are voting for Warnock and no one else, or people are voting for Warnock and not voting for Leffler. Much higher earlier, not that long ago, Purdue's lead has now gone up to 1,538 votes. 64% of the vote is in. The other contest, Raphael Warnock, uh, he still has a 20, nearly a 25,000 vote lead over the Republican Kelly Leffler. Yeah, look, Leffler has uh, uh, less votes than, uh, I think, in, in the end, Leffler will probably have less votes than Purdue will. Like, it won't be a one-to-one. -one. It'll never be one-to-one -one regardless, but... Like, Warnock is more radical. Very L.A. take. I don't think it's black representation. More like people don't like appointed slash unelected senators. No, that's a huge, uh, huge, huge reason as well. You're correct. Uh, no, it is representation. It's black representation. It absolutely does fucking matter. Shut the fuck up. Especially because it's good black representation, too. Like, you have a, a, a community organizer, a pastor, a person who has been a profoundly important part of uh, black existence in Atlanta for, and in Georgia, sorry, for a very long time. So much so that fucking Kelly Leffler herself attended his sermons and shit. Like, that is, that's not just like, that's not just like, oh, we put a black person and now we expect all the black people to vote for him. This is entirely different than like literally just expecting all black people to vote for the black guy. This is literally a fucking black pastor. Like, from Martin Luther King Jr.'s church. What, what do you mean? Like, I'm not... I, remember, I shit on people who are like, oh, Kanye's gonna steal the black vote. No, that's idiotic. Obviously, that's not gonna happen. But in this circumstance, it's entirely different. We're talking about a black reverend in the fucking South. Okay? But you are correct as well that uh, people do despise uh, appointed senators, especially when they're like Martha McFucking Sally in Arizona. What did I say? That this was going to be a similar race to Martha McSally versus, uh, the, what's his face? The fucking astronaut Andy, Mark Kelly. And that is exactly how it's uh, coming out to be. But that doesn't mean Ossoff is going to lose. I'm close to 60 here. Right? Unfortunately, the reality is Purdue is a stronger candidate who has already won. Ossoff has a harder race. That's just the reality. But luckily, it's a dual ticket. Chalian just noted, we are getting throughout most of the state 
some of the today vote, the election day vote. That tells you you're still at 34 percent. That tells you most of what we have, if not all of what we have, is early vote, which is disproportionately Democrat. So the Democrats will win Gwinnett County. You know, you can bet on that. The question is, can they keep the margins like this and can they run up the numbers? Because they need that math, the raw number. They need that to offset what is going to happen in some of these other places. And we just got them. We were waiting for these earlier, Wolf. We had nothing from Forsyth County. We're up to 21 percent right now. 52 percent for Kelly Leffler here. 52% for David Perdue there at 21%. Again, the question is, what is this vote, right? And we'll check in with our reporters to see, because if those numbers stay there, uh, that bodes actually pretty well for the Democrats. Because if you go back to the presidential race, Donald Trump got 66% of the vote in Forsyth County. This is a place where there were still a lot of people in line at seven o'clock when the polls were closing. The lines were an hour long or more throughout the day. This should be Republican country. This should be if you will, the buffer, right? You know, you know what's going to happen if you're a Republican in Atlanta and the close-in suburbs. You need to offset it here, like the president did. He narrowly lost, but he did what he needed to do in Forsyth County, or came close anyway, the 21%. If that stays that, if that stays a five-point race, then the Democrats are in good shape. But I, I don't suspect, know why as we go from the 21%, the higher, makes it there seem are Democrats like in Forsyth County, and they the voted The needle early, is like out, out of his hands right or what some shit. What do we see shit? in Chatham County and Savannah right now? That's a Democratic county. It is a Democratic county, and we've been stuck. We were waiting a long time to get any votes, so we're grateful to see 40 percent. But we're still at 40 percent, and we've been there for a little bit. Again, 68 percent for John Ossoff to 32 percent if you round up, come over here. The Democratic race, for the most part, there are some exceptions, and we'll look at them as we get later into the night probably, but they're tracking pretty much here. Again, 40 percent. This is absolutely essential for the Democrats to run up the raw numbers here because you're talking about the fifth largest county by population in the state. So you've got a lot of votes there as you come out. And if you pop out, Pastor Warnock now at 13,000 vote, 13, 14,000 if you round up. David Perdue's lead up to 11,000 votes. So we're in the seesaw now as these counties come in. Um, we're just going to have to wait and get the rest of them. But if you're the Democrats, you want to watch here. You're watching what's still out around here. And if you're the Republicans, this gray has to come in for you and it has to come in big. If you're the Republicans, those numbers need to get better. In Forsyth County, and when the rest of Cherokee County, you're up to 95 percent now. So this is one of the places where you knew if you were a Republican, this was going to help you. The question is, you've gotten most of your help now. So you got, if, you, if you're going to need votes, you have to find them elsewhere. Yeah, it's really, really close. Take a look at the numbers uh, right now. Look at this. 66 percent of the vote is in. Two thirds of the vote has now been counted uh, in Georgia. Look at how close it is. Uh, Raphael Warnock's lead is 12,395 over Republican Kelly Leffler. He's got... Uh, of 50.2 percent to 49.8 percent. Uh, the other contest, the Republican David Perdue, a mirror image of the uh, of the uh, Raphael Warnock Kelly Loeffler contest. Perdue has a lead of more than 14,000 votes over the Democrat John Ossoff right now, 50.2 percent to 49.8 percent. Remember, two thirds of the estimated vote is now in. Uh, it is incredibly, John, incredibly close. Both of these contests with plenty of votes yeah. outstanding. Uh, mirror images right now, but these contests are, are really close. Right. And so as we walk through this, one of the things we will do is why is David Perdue running stronger than Kelly Leffler? Or why is yeah, John Yeah, if it's Ossoff a one-to-one -one Republican, uh, Republicans win, we'll by the way, remember. As we go through if it's a one-to-one -one and Ossoff loses and, and Warnock wins, it's not a win. It's a, it's a fucking lose. And... Normally, I would say, oh, it's because fucking John Ossoff is like a neoliberal, blah, blah, blah. But that's not really, like, I I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't think it's because, like, he was anti-Medicare for all. That could have factored into people's decision making. But overall, I think representation trumps that. Overall, I think David Perdue being a stronger candidate in comparison to Leffler uh, trumps that reality. And I think ultimately, uh, uh, part of the reason is because... Yeah, I mean, it's just the, what I just mentioned to you. Like, it's not, it's not like the fucking fact that he is more centrist or whatever. Because I do think that John Ossoff greatly turned up more progressive messaging closer and closer. He was, a, he was a much better competitor in the Senate race than he was in the House when he got fucking owned, if you remember. ...are going to get an advantage here. Could even be a couple thousand votes. Could be a few thousand votes in a county here. They're going to get an advantage here. Again, could be a couple thousand votes. So you're thinking about where are the leads now, or if you're Purdue, you have a lead. Do I consider Warnock a progressive? Yes. Some of that's going to come from right here. Yes. Warnock will be one of the most progressive, or his background is probably, if not one of the most progressive senators out there, like straight up. I don't know how he will actually end up uh, 
legislating. Uh, I don't know, but I mean, yeah, he is guys like he's a, he's a black reverend. Like dude, there's, there's only two ways that that happens. Like either you're literally fucking communist, you know, MLK style, or you're a total fucking shark and, uh, an establishment Democrat. Like, because you're running behind statewide right now. So you need to make it up. And this is where you can make it up as the rest of this vote comes in. But if David Perdue is more competitive in these suburbs, especially as you move away, that becomes the issue. So we're going to have a seesaw and you come back over to Fulton County. David Perdue running at 26 percent. If you round up, if you go back to November, he ran. That's the presidential race. Let me come here. He ran at 28 percent. So this is our test. Black, David black, Perdue black, right blah, 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 blah. Getting boring, to be honest. 14,000 <laughs> votes statewide, if you look at it. One of the reasons, one of the things we did see in November is he overperformed President Trump in the suburbs. Will that happen tonight? Brain as the rest of these ape. votes come in? And then when you look at the other race, come here, come here, sorry, got to go, come up here and come here. This one. Aw. Are you sad? Are you sad? Are you upset? Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I don't want to hear it anymore. Mm. The mere mention of someone being black triggers me. My sensibilities, you're upsetting my white fragility. <laughs> you're delusional. You're so brain dead. That's what you sound like, bitch. Zeno J99. Here you go. Here. Take a little time out. Cool off, okay? What are the chances of Biden making college tuition free? Maybe community colleges, but even that is very low. What the fuck? Yeah, low as fuck, brother. If not zero, even the community, even the community college uh, being zero is going to be Anyway, will Olympic and uh, Miskiv want to play Monopoly with you? I very clearly cannot right now, considering that this is probably the last, uh, like important thing that's going to happen, important election that's going to happen, and I'm going to cover it. Nick Cohen about the Ossoff race. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind at the Ossoff race is that it does include some late absentees slash provisionals that won't be counted tonight, and it's very conceivable that he'll need them to clear the 0.5% re uh, recount threshold, even if he goes on to win by 0.9, like currently estimated. Proud Boys are hitting the streets of DC, now calling out Antifa and looking for fights. I mean, they should just fucking... You should suck my dick instead, okay? This honest triggered enough. Don't put him in the monopoly capitalist hellhole. No, I, I, I also am like anti-monopoly across the board. I think monopoly is just like not. Why is also trailing? Wouldn't people be voting for vote them? Okay, guys, if you look at the vote totals currently, you will, you will notice that Kelly Leffler has less votes than David Perdue. And the reason why David Perdue has more votes than Leffler is because uh, David Perdue is a stronger candidate. Okay? That's it. That's the reality. Leffler is an appointed person. Like, she was appointed to that seat. Didn't really answer his question. Wait, what? That's it. That's the reason. It, people don't like per, people don't like Leffler. Your misogyny is showing again. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Georgia Secretary of State is about to do a random press conference. 
I don't understand how someone can vote Warnock and also vote Purdue. No, you, first of all, don't try to understand how Americans vote, okay? Why in the fuck? What have I told you since day one? You will never understand the, the average like voter's mind and how they make up their mind and how they vote. Do you understand? You will never be able to comprehend it. Just by the fact that you're here on twitch.tv slash Hasanabi right now in this moment, tracking the results of this election, by the fact that you don't live in Georgia for the most part, I assume, means that you are already like operating in the very slim minority of voters in America. 80% of American voters vote on partisan lines, okay? But they are, outside of that, they are a sea of contradictions, okay? American voters believe in completely contradicting values. They hold completely contradicting values in their minds at all fucking times, okay? And, and this goes for the rest of the world, too. It's a little bit different when you're in a multi-party system, but don't try to make sense of how someone could vote for someone and then not for another. You will lose your mind. You will literally fucking... You will find yourself trying to uh, understand how... Uh, psychopaths operate like it's just not you will never understand it you'll go insane black turnout looks frankly phenomenal purdue and leffler are approaching trump percentages of the vote in a lot of deep red uh in a lot of the deep red rural counties but turnout there isn't anything special it's getting harder to see a path for either republican but especially leffler yeah, exactly. Can you ask Warnock if he wants to do a cheeky scav run? Yeah, I wonder if Warnock and his, uh, I wonder if Warnock will come on my stream now that like, you know, he, he won his election. If he did, of course, inshallah. Typical redneck voter, would they rather vote for a woman or a black guy? I feel like that's a tough choice for them. No, I think they would still vote for the woman, but... It's not just that either, so it doesn't matter. You need to get a link from someone about the GA exit poll that said 9% thought Leffler was too liberal. Yeah, I saw that. Look, dude, exit polls are fucking stupid. So, uh, again. Like, Leffler, Leffler's lead here uh, with 70% reported is insignificant because rural ca rural county uh vote percentages is uh, like rural counties won't fucking carry uh the the vote totals here okay and the performance of especially the black vote but the performance of like cities and urban areas has been so good that even if rural counties hit trump level turnout well not trump level turnout but Actually, if they hit Trump level turnout, they might win, but uh, close to Trump level turnout, but they still underperform Biden level turnout or close to Biden level turnout by Democrats, they'll lose. They were Purdue's the cousin of Sony Purdue, who was the governor of GIA until like 2011. The name carries weight in the state as a result. Yes, Purdue's are, Purdue's are, uh, or Purdue himself is, is well liked. Unfortunately, he is not like Leffler. Leffler was appointed. Leffler is out of touch. Leffler literally is the, the perfect representation of like an annoying elitist fucking piece of shit who just ran for president or not president who ran for Senate because she was bored and was appointed to that seat because she was fucking bored. Here's the story now. Yeah, we already, I already read this, but black turnout looks frankly phenomenal. Yeah. And the election needle is showing, uh, leaning towards Warnock and Ossoff because of the remaining votes and what areas the remaining votes are coming from. And also performance adjusted to performance in the general election. That's why while Leffler and uh, Purdue currently hold leads, those leads are overall insignificant. Or not insignificant, but, you know, not as important as uh, what will end up happening.
also for the people who are saying we'll get legal weed like joe biden is president guys uh, i don't know if you remember that but that was kind of a race that progressives lost so i don't know if that happens in the senate the past you know five weeks talking about the fact that the election was rigged, never mind that phone call yesterday. We don't know what's going to happen, but it is all connected. Yeah, and I, it makes me uh, think about what Jim just reported, which is one of the things President Trump has said to Pence is that it's gonna hurt you politically if you don't back me up on this. Well, what's happening potentially in Georgia tonight kind of a puts a question mark on whether the president can actually follow through on some of these threats that he's been making for the last several months to disloyal Republicans saying, well, if you don't back me up on this, uh, I'm going to have people primary you. My voters are going to come out and punish you. If tonight in Georgia, Republican voters don't show up, it's going to be partly because of the president's uh, uh, false claims about voter fraud, as Gabriel Sterling said, but also because he's not on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And I, for Republicans looking forward, there are some real questions about what happens to Republican turnout when Donald Trump is not on the ballot. Uh, do those people actually show up? And can President Trump actually carry out these threats when he's no longer in office? In 2022 and 2024, can he really muster up uh, the support to uh, to carry out retribution against people happened before submission who, uh, and refunded don't toe the line, uh, you know I don't know that Mike Pence cares about that. I think he's still very concerned about uh, being loyal to President Trump. But a lot of other Republicans in Washington and elsewhere should be thinking about that tonight. Yeah, the Vice President really needs to realize what's going on here. He's he's not getting the blessings of President Trump for 2024. That's just how it is. Uh, I, Wolf. All right, Jake, take a look at this. Another key race alert right now. Key and race all of a sudden, uh, the Democrat, Raphael Warnock, has taken the lead over the Republican Kelly Loeffler uh, by almost 20,000 votes, uh, 19,160 votes. He was behind. Now he's ahead 50.3% to 49.70%. 75% of the estimated vote is now in. Impressive how they're counting the vote in Georgia right now. Uh, and John Ossoff, the Democrats, closing in on Purdue. He was uh, more significantly ahead just a little while Stop ago, the, the Republican count. David Purdue. He's still ahead by 5,600 votes over John Ossoff, 50.1% to 49.9%. Uh, it's close, very close. Both of these Senate runoffs are very, very close right now with 75% of the estimated vote is in. We're watching all of this oh so closely right now let's go over to john king uh, at the magic well these votes where are they coming in from right now to make it as close as it is uh, all of a sudden warnock uh, has a lead of almost twenty thousand votes he was behind just a few minutes ago the answer to your question is right here gwinnett county suburban atlanta to the northeast of atlanta uh, that was the big report that just came in that a put Raphael Warnock from trailing to ahead and narrowed the other race as well. David Perdue still on top, but John Ossoff closing as well. And you see right here, this is why. A large suburban area again to the northeast of Atlanta, 187,000 to 109,000, 84% of the voting right now. A big jump in the reporting in Gwinnett County, 63% to 37% if you round up. If you look at the other race, 63% to 37%, staying consistent there. David Perdue is outperforming Kelly Leffler in some other areas, which is why at the moment he's still ahead by 5,000 votes when you come out and look statewide. All right, folks, I'm going to bring in, uh, I'm going to bring in two friends of the show right now, Dave Weigel and also Ryan Grimm. Okay, one second. Hey, Dave. Hey, man. What's going on? Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to turn off my camera. And also, oh. I'm going to add Ryan Grimm of The Intercept as well to our call. That's right. Hold on. So, new group DM, you might have to rejoin the with your camera. You might turn your camera back on. Oh, yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Actually, why don't I just turn my camera off and then put it on on your end? Let's do that. How's your night been so far, Dave? It's been interesting. I mean, things came in faster than I thought. Uh, Democrats were, were um, I think, kind of worried in the middle of the day, but for normal Democrat reasons. And uh, I don't know. So the nice thing about <laughs> going to the state and uh, a few times and, and reporting on things, you, you pick up what people ex were worried about. And the things Republicans are worried about seem to happen more than the things Democrats are worried about. I mean, we've got a bunch of votes left in Atlanta, but uh, Republicans are worried that in, in kind of the North Georgia 
heartland conservative areas, the places that are still really Republican, even though the George, like, you know, the closest suburbs of Atlanta flipped, uh, they they were worried that turnout wouldn't be as robust as Democratic turnout. That seems to be kind of happening. I mean, if you look at what's still out, you, they, if you you know you're looking at TV, and Ryan probably hates this too, you'll see that like the blue <laughs> the blue and the red change. The problem is that uh, the best Republican areas came in and it pushed them to you know fifty point one percent that's not enough there's just a ton of atlanta that's coming out um i think ryan has joined us as well but uh his camera's not working ryan yo what's going on you you want to turn on your camera all right there it is um what's going on guys wow you you guys both look great by the way i just gotta say you're you're all dressed up (laughs) i feel a little i feel a little uh not dressed enough for the occasion all but for you. okay, so if things seem to be looking pretty good for uh, the the Democrats right now, um, is that a weird sentence to say out loud? What that things <laughs> seem to be looking pretty good for the Democrats? Yeah, I did not expect this to happen. Yeah. I I thought that like yeah. I I mean the only thing I thought that would uh, carry if you asked me uh, two weeks ago or a week ago like who's gonna win, I'd be like I mean it's pretty likely that the Republicans are gonna. Uh, run the table, but uh, I, I mean, we didn't have a lot of polling information. Uh, I don't know if that was on purpose or not. I mean, there was some, there was, there were polls, but it wasn't like the general election. I feel like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of exhaustion. I think people are just like exhausted by, uh, even uh, following elections. Uh, I don't think people want to, uh, people care about it as much. Uh, clearly it was impossible not to, it, it was impossible to avoid the elections in Georgia, uh, with all the ads that they were pumping in that market. But, um, I, I really thought that it was going to be the most predictable outcome, which is Republicans winning, but, uh, I, I was wrong. And I think that a big part of that is because of Donald Trump and the gift that he gave to the democratic party in a moment of weakness and anger against, uh, Mitch McConnell for daring to, uh, for daring to admit the reality that, uh, Joe Biden is the next president. Uh, talking about the 2K, the veto for uh, the NDAA, which was unrelated to that, but still that was also helpful in extending the conversation around 2K. Democrats actually having a a unifying moment uh, in the national stage and centering this race around $2,000, despite the fact that Joe Biden didn't do that until later. I think this all worked in their favor, right? And your favorite, uh, Wasserman, just called it. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dave more, Wasserman more, just more called it. No, I, I, Hassan, I think you kind of extra hate the dude, don't you? Um. I think, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of Dave Wasserman. I think he's a huge liberal, and uh, I, I don't like it when analysts are, uh, are, are uh, they play the role of punditry, and that's part of the reason why I, I criticize Nate Silver a lot, too. At least I admit that I'm a dumb himbo who doesn't know anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, he can kind of be a jerk sometimes too, which is oh yeah, need that from our anal- analysts. Like that's fine from himbos and from uh, from jerks, but we don't want that from analysts. Exactly. Be nice. Exactly. But um, ne- ne- never, nevertheless, uh, he's he has said he has seen enough uh, on Warnock, uh, not yet on Ossoff. Which is it's trending that uh, way for Ossoff, though. It yeah, it's, it's, it's looking it pretty good is. for Ossoff too, right? Yeah. So, what do you guys think? What what are the what are the main reasons? I mean, it's not over yet, but uh, we're talking a little bit like it's over. But for let's talk about Warnock, which we all are, I guess, assuming is over, right? Like, what what do you think is the is the big factor here? Uh, I don't want to monopolize, but I mean, um, from being there. Like real quickly, I've been on a bunch of shows. I'm trying to get less rambly as I as I do this. I'm bad bad start already. Uh, but Warnock ran this really smart campaign for, since November. So he needed to get through the 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 runoff. He did or to the runoff. Uh, he immediately reintroduced himself with this ad that you know everyone's seen now, where he's like, they're going to say, "I hate puppies. I love puppies." And he had this the kind of ads that get you dragged on Twitter because they're that people say, "What what is this about?" But he had a series of ads where he was just playing with the dogs, making fun of Kelly Leffler running negative ads. Um, and in addition to that, he was running on this substantive agenda. I mean, every if you watch TV, you clicked on YouTube in Georgia, you saw him ads for him and for Ossoff running before videos, and they were just direct, five seconds. Uh, do you want $2,000 checks? Vote, vote on Tuesday. Uh, 
do you want student debt relief? Vote. So they had this combination of we're running a positive campaign and we're doing stuff. And they had some negativity on you know, the stock trade scandal. That was their main uh, hit point on, on Purdue and, and, and Leffler. But it was a combination of really good branding and, and stuff and like stuff they would do. And I feel like I didn't quite appreciate that until I was in Georgia, how much they were just, hey, this is a transaction. You are going to get stuff if you vote for us. We're not running on unity or love Trump's hate or um, stronger togetherness. Or also original uh, <laughs> a congressional race where he got owned. Oh, God. Which was yeah, like yeah. literally the worst, uh, it, it, the worst possible campaign that you could run. And even I noticed that he, uh, I knew that Warnock was going to definitely run on the issues, but I, I was surprised to see how much uh, John Ossoff was also on board with identifying uh, the $2,000 uh, direct cash payments and, and centering his uh, campaign around key policy issues. Uh, progressive policy issues it's almost uh, it's almost like leftists were correct when they say like run on issues uh, it's going to help you um even before donald trump actually gave us an additional boost there or the democrats an additional boost there uh what do you think ryan yeah i mean the, well i uh i think dave is the one i saw point out on on twitter that warnock himself like ran a, a direct ad on the two thousand dollar checks like you want a two thousand dollar check vote vote for Raphael warnock uh joe biden in his, at that 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 moment of him at the rally where he says you know if you elect the reverend and you elect john you will get a two thousand dollar check and all your loved ones will get a two thousand dollar check and all the people around the country who are in desperate need will get the che a two thousand dollar check and nobody has that power other than you and if you do it it will happen immediately like that was a remarkable moment uh and and it you know it helps cement the idea that that this is this is what this is about and in in a race where it's where things are so close if you can if you can move a few tens of thousands of people one direction or another that that really matters i think there are also to to dave's earlier point some really interesting kind of racial dynamics at, at play here, because the reason that we have runoffs in the Senate is specifically and explicitly so that black candidates cannot be elected in the South. Like that is why runoffs were created. So that in a situation where you have, let's say a 40% black population in an area uh, that you couldn't have a, a split white vote and a black candidate is elected. So the South put into place these these runoffs if you don't get 50 percent then you have to uh you know face off one against one so it would be a black candidate against a white candidate and the white candidate would win like that's that's the design that's part of it but then the other racial dynamics are at play are what black candidates are allowed to do versus what white candidates are allowed to do in campaigns and black candidates are not allowed by our culture, our political culture, to get as aggressive and to attack as much uh, as as white as white candidates are. Because then, then you then then you're scaring white people away, and you're and you're looking like an ang angry black man. And so, by being able to run as a t as a tag team, uh, that that sort of allowed Warnock to do the puppy ad, to do the the he did this great ad where he's like pulling his Christmas lights out of a box, trying to disentangle them, um, showing like he's basically saying and, he, and a lot of white women in the ads um, saying like, look, I'm not I'm not threatening. I want a better world for everybody. And, it, it, you know, there's a, it's, it's not even very subtle what he's what he's saying to people. He's trying to ease racial racial anxieties. But then at the same time, you've got Ossoff, who's then throwing haymakers one after the other at the at the at republican corruption and republican insider trading and and what uh and it and it very much helped that both of them were were criminals in the in the <laughs> in the way that they they like they had the same yeah, in a really understandable they, way like you could explain it in five seconds what they did right. yeah right it, it, it's great that they were both uh, caught insider rich. trading uh that's that's basically because if one was a financial criminal of a different sort, it would be maybe a little bit more difficult to describe. Right. But they literally both <laughs> like the same profited. Crime. Yeah, That's... yeah. Um, no, I think that that is really interesting. So that... Ossoff went a lot. He went a lot more negative. Um, 
like he was the he was the bad cop in a way yeah totally like, his ads were like right um and you he, saw that and, in and that I think Dave, news you know, interview he did in the in the final weekend can i be uh, can you hear me i thought you said hey dave mm-hmm. no nope. oh uh, but yeah, you saw in the final weekend like fox news uh is at his campaign stop and he just does an impromptu interview with them and just keeps calling saying that kelly liffler campaign with the klansman but uh uh Warnock couldn't do that. I mean, Warnock didn't want to get into that kind of fight. He did a couple times when she'd hit him, he'd say she's campaigned with Marjorie Taylor Greene and QAnon. He's she's campaigned with the Klansman. But he he your that dynamic is just what, what Ryan said. Whenever Ossoff had the opportunity, he's the one who went kind of you know the Spyro Agnew you know below the belt uh, candidate, and and Warnock got to float, which worked for him because he was the one getting probably by the end two hundred million dollars in negative ads dumped on him. I think, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think a, a big advantage uh, in that dynamic for Warnock was also the fact, like, the reason why he ran uh, specifically a uh, positive-only ad campaign for the most part, I think, was because uh, there was so much more. I mean, he's a black pastor. He's a black reverend. Like, uh, if you if you look at uh, any sort of, like, black liberation theology, like, there's going to be some radical takes that you hear. That's why they were literally tying him to uh, Obama's uh, original pastor, uh, Jeremiah Wright. In, a, in an, I would even say, very racist way, where they were just like, that's a black pastor, this is a black pastor. If you guys remember, like, they were using the goddamn America quote, uh, and it's not even, like, that's not even uh, uh, Warnock's own quote. Like, it's very clearly clip-chimped yeah. uh, from him uh, talking about the issue, and, and they didn't really care, and I think that Warnock running an overall positive campaign in that way uh, probably contributed. Do you think that that's the reason why... Uh, he's getting more votes, or do you think it's just because like Leffler is uh, really weak as a candidate, as far as candidates goes, both because she's elitist and you can literally tell that she is, and also because she was appointed to that position rather than elected? Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. I, yes, she was uh, clearly, and I think um, exit polling is going to get adjusted. She had lower favorables than him. I mean, the first thing people got to know about her was that she... Uh, was that she made the stock trade. So that didn't help. But she had this primary, and Doug Collins, the you know, the Republican impeachment manager, ran against her. He had this primary where she she ran really hard to the right, ran this ad, uh, a series of ads that called her more conservative than Attila the Hun. Yeah. Uh, and it never scanned. I mean, I noticed the ambient noise, the ambient noise I noticed was like, I would tweet um, just a clip of her talking or I'd qu- a tweet a quote. Twitter, you know, it's what it is. But I wouldn't even understand how how it looked to people who were not on a campaign trail. Cause they were like, they were, I, mean, I did one the other night where she was rattling off. We're going to fight cancel culture and protect life and all this. And everyone, the, uh, everyone's reaction was like, do people believe this? I mean, she just, she had a very awkward transition uh, as a, she'd never run for anything, very awkward transition as a candidate and just never seemed real. Uh, she always seemed like she knew what to say to the, the people, you know, at her rallies. But it was but, so fake. Um, it didn't it was, seem real. Yeah, It was as fake as her. I, I kept saying this, like, I have no evidence for this, but I suspect that the photo with the Klansman that came mm-hmm. out was 100% an op from her own team to, like, leak that photo so she looks more Georgian so that people will talk <laughs> about her with a Klansman and then, like, Democrats will hit on her on that and then they can turn around and counter message around it and be like, oh, look, the Democrats are going crazy again, saying I'm with a Klansman to like show that she was more with it uh, to, to seem more Georgian than uh, than she actually is. Like I I literally like it, it was like she would just turn up the racism dial a little bit or go out and like skeet shoot or something every time uh, every time she wanted to appear more Georgian. And it was so transparently pandering that I was shocked that like Republicans would would eat that up and and truly believe it. Uh, it's just it's obvious. It's as, as obvious as her denim uh, America flag trucker hat that uh, it's just out of place. Like she's very clearly an elitist, like very rich uh, billionaire wife who doubled her fucking wealth since the pandemic started. And uh, I don't know. It, it's it was just, she was so and horrifically add, unlikable. Yeah. So that that's that's a half point, maybe all of that together, because there's so much partisanship. And then, you know, you add you add on top of that, that the you know, the Purdue name in Georgia still has some uh, residual affinity with some sectors of 
the Republican Party down there. So you, you could plausibly see people who like, oh, yeah, I like Sonny Perdue. David's probably fine. And then you, you tack on top of that misogyny. I'm sure you could dig up political science articles about Republican uh, voters that would show like a, a, a small difference, but small but significant, statistically significant difference in, in their willingness to vote for a man versus a woman. Um, and then when you pile onto it, um, the, the, the type of candidate that Leffler was, then I think you, 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 you almost end up being amazed that the, the gap was only as big as it was. Yeah. But then it comes back to, comes back to, um, just partisanship, you know, people just voting, voting their ticket, like no matter who's, no matter whose name is there. So uh, I have to jump off. There's a po- uh, up- update. I have to do another thing that I agreed to uh, before you called me. I'll let you guys keep talking. I can come in later. I might just um, DM you if there's time yeah, for me later. You can, you can jump in whenever you want. All right. Well, th- good, good to talk now. It was a, I was on for the Wasserman call. That's history, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that <is> history. <laughs> Dave has seen enough. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys. All right. Bye. All right, Ryan. So uh what do you what do you think makes up for the disparity between uh the amount of votes for leffler versus purdue though aside from the fact that like purdue's name carries weight like how does that work do you think that there's like just a bunch of republicans out there who are like literally voting for purdue and then going and voting for warnock obviously not uh are they just like you know are some people just voting for warnock and not for ossoff like how do you think that works I think some, so I think there might be enough because you're talking really small numbers at this point, you know, to make up that gap. So there might, there, there are definitely some who are plugged in enough who know that Republicans actually only need to win one of those two seats to hold on to the Senate. And so if you're a Republican and you want to, you want to hold on to the Senate, uh, you're going to, you're, you're probably going to go in there and vote for Purdue and leave the other one blank. Um, which which we can analyze later. Like we can look at like total numbers of votes. Like you can you know total numbers of voters, and then comp- and then see if there's you know how many people left different races blank. And so I I bet a significant amount of the difference will be um, not that not that people voted for um, Warnock necessarily. Uh, but just left that one blank. But you also might find, you know, a few, you know, there, the, the thing is when you go out and talk to voters about politics, you're going to find pl- plenty of people who just have no coherent, you know, view of, you know, how they see politics. And because whatever, half a billion dollars was spent advertising in this race, um, it was more like a general election than like a runoff. Because with, with a runoff, you get more uh, plugged in voters who come out. But with the uh, w- when a- the same turnout uh, for a general election applies to a runoff, then you're going to get a lot of cranks who come out too. And so some of those cranks are um, just going to have more eclectic views of of politics and might say, you know what, we need balance. Um, and they don't like women, so they vote Purdue. Um, but I, but I actually think you can explain basically all of it with what with the combination of a, a uniquely terrible candidate, never elected, was appointed to the Senate, um, produce produce solid name, and and a little bit of misogyny. Yeah, and probably you know for some people probably just don't like Ossoff. Like he probably rubs some people the wrong way. You, you think Ossoff rub the rub people the wrong way? Really? Like, I mean, I, a few, like, uh, you know, if t- 10,000 or whatever might be like, I'm not voting for this twerp. Um, you maybe. Know, you, you know, for, on the Repu- I, I on think the, representation you know, in that, in that circumstance was probably helpful too, no? Uh, I, I feel like, I, I feel like, uh, black voter turnout is, is obviously key here. Uh, as, I mean, that was, uh, what was the main driver of the, the uh, difference mm-hmm. in the votes? And uh, I feel like representation in that circumstance means something, especially because um, this isn't like fucking Kanye West. This is an actual black reverend in the South. 
So like a respectable uh, community leader that has been around for a very long time. It almost perfectly works with, uh, it almost perfectly works with, uh, Stacey Abrams' uh, organizing strategy, which is uh, not necessarily organizing four years before an election or, or not necessarily organizing immediately up to an election or before an election, but organizing year, uh, organizing year round. And if anything, uh, Raphael Warnock has been a community organizer and a community leader for a very long time. Uh, so I, I think that that probably yeah. uh, factors into it as well. Um, so, and, Go ahead. No, yeah, the other part that fits with with Abrams' strategy for running different campaigns in Georgia is to is to stop uh, stop trying to just um, appeal to uh, white voters and and just assume that black voters are are going to come along. You know, her argument was if if you can energize black voters, there are enough of them that will come out and they. They will combine in coalition with energized progressive white voters who are who are not racist um, or, or who who are, or who are you know, willing to vote for uh, Democrats, not because you're just the slightly lesser Republican, but you still express some racial anxieties, but just do them more gently than the Republicans do. But um, you're 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 coming forward as an actual progressive. And there, her argument was there are enough people that are willing to do that, that you don't have to run like the old kind of uh, Georgia Democrat or the old Arkansas Democrat or you know, the, the t typical Democrat in the South was socially conservative, you know, anti anti gay, um, you know, ex expressed racial animosity through through different dog whistles uh, was, you know, was uh, misogynistic on. On, on some levels to, sh you know, to show, um, you know, a, a, a Southern machismo and, you know, would just, so just culturally conservative and then also economically conservative, you know, for, for austerity, for, you know, cutting the deficit, uh, for, cu for cutting taxes on the rich, you know, it was just basically a, a Republican, but a more moderate Republican just running as a, running as a Democrat. That was the, that was the old model. And that's not at all how uh, Warnock and, and Ostoff ran. Yeah, doesn't you know, this destroy that? Up, yeah, yeah. Let's get, let's get to the heart of this matter here, yeah. Ryan. Uh, the 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 gloating part of the conversation. Now the race is not over yet. Things may change. It does yeah. seem like the cap the Cobb County. <laughs> so uh, we better hurry up and gloat. Yeah, it is is uh, heavily favoring Democrats. So that's what's uh, although Leffler and Purdue are currently up. Uh, that uh, DeKalb County votes, the Cobb County votes are going to end up uh, securing uh, the the victory for both of the Democratic uh, candidates here. Um, but it does seem like this election where senators, uh, whether they on accident or whether they were forced into this corner, ended up advocating for clear, tangible policy positions. Uh, especially the $2,000, which is something that Americans love. Because $2,000, even if rich people are getting it, is always going to be good because it's uh, functionally a tax credit, right? Like, I mean, you can literally look at it as a tax cut. Republicans can't literally say tax cuts for the wealthy are good all the time because uh, poor people are getting tax cuts and then turn around and be like, never mind, if some rich people are going to get $2,000, it's actually bad now. No, Americans don't give a shit about that. They love when the government gives them direct money. Uh, they love that way more than... Uh, that. That's a way easier argument to make than, uh, I don't know, social safety nets and, like, you know, paying for things that they will inevitably uh, see later down the line, like social security payments and things like that, right? Unless they're literally older and uh, mm -hmm. getting social security payments and be benefiting from it directly. So... I think that uh, whether by accident, whether on purpose, it doesn't matter. Democrats being backed into a corner to actually advocate for policies rather than uh, running a referendum on Donald Trump being bad turned out to be really good, really fruitful, right. and uh, is is showing it right now. This is a this is the reality, uh, and um, I think no matter which way you look at it, maybe the leftists were correct. 
Uh, and it wasn't necessarily that like Warnock ran a centrist campaign and so did Ossoff, especially when considering the fact that both of them were pretty progressive when talking about uh, 2K cash payments and, and numerous other things as well. Right. right. You, they, they, gave, they gave people something to vote for and they voted. It's, it's, a, it's a remarkable thing to have seen. Um, that, it, it shouldn't be that remarkable. It, sh it shouldn't be <laughs> the case that, that it's almost an experiment for Democrats to try to offer people something positive and affirmative to get them to come out to vote rather than just saying they'll protect you from Donald Trump or they'll protect the ACA or they'll protect social security or whatever else. It's like, good, good. Okay. Yeah. Please, please. Yes. Protect all these things, but whatever that does, that, that just makes my life the same on Wednesday as it was, as it was on Tuesday. You know, this was extremely explicit. Like you want $2,000, like Mitch McConnell's standing in the way you can get him out of the way by, by electing these two guys. And it's true that like they don't, they're not, um, they didn't support explicitly Medicare for all. They didn't explicitly support um, Green New Deal. Uh, and I think there should be some kind of some soul searching on the on on the progressive side there. Why can't like wh wh why did these calculating politicians feel like they could run a progressive campaign, but that was too much? Like that that was going to hurt them somehow. Like which they, which they clearly felt because they they calculated we're gonna we're gonna use other language to say how we want to address the climate crisis how we want to how we want to get everybody covered. Um, Ossoff is is an interesting case. You know he uh, so you know he 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 did an interview for uh, my book, uh, which itself I thought was kind of an interesting. Um, decision you know and also like when he launched his campaign like his team and he and he reached out to the intercept to be the first to to break it so then we sure okay you're gonna run for senate we'll, you know we'll we'll write that story um when when you're launching your campaign you know you make you know obviously they, pl they placed it with a the atlanta journal constitution as well because you got you gotta you can't you can't snub the local press but when you're launching your campaign, you're trying to frame what kind of candidate you're going to run as. You know, the decisions you make of where you try to pitch your candidacy to say a lot about what kind of race you, you plan on running. Um, and so for, for a campaign to reach out to The Intercept and say, like, we want our uh, launch to be, you know, report, first reported nationally in The Intercept, you know, uh, you know, says that they're they're not at all running that centrist uh, campaign that that you're talking about and when he, when I interviewed him for for my book what he wanted to do was was push back against the idea of him as this corporate stooge from his uh 2017 race which uh he definitely was uh, you know he well he, it it stung so I'll give you his I'll give you his argument so you see what you you make of it he said a I took no corporate PAC money not a single penny of, of corporate money uh i had more corporate money spent against me than any candidate in the history of the con congressional elections um now his his argument for why his ad sucked uh and his campaign was kind of bland was he was like look i was i was a first-time candidate uh he was a hill staffer and then became a documentary uh you know film producer and he was a really good Hill staffer, actually, um, which, I, you know, I knew him a bit. And uh, but Lee Fong worked with him. Um, yeah, can, Lee Fong talked about for... how Lee Fong uh, talked about how he uh, reached out to him uh, to uh, to potentially talk about how lobbyists were. What was it? it he, he tweeted about this earlier today. He, he talked about how like uh, uh, were they, were they were basically creating malware that would that they could sell. Um, to companies to help them hack into rivals. And um, he was also one of the best Hill staffers on, uh, on NSA surveillance, you know, pre Snowden. Um, so in, in any event, so, so his, so he said, he's like, look, I was a first time candidate. I wasn't even D triple C didn't want to even compete in the race. They didn't think it was a serious race. 
because the guy had won by the Republican had won by 20 points the last time. I wasn't even sure I was going to make the runoff. And then all of a sudden I'm getting millions of dollars from anti-Trump people, you know, pouring into the campaign and tens of thousands of people door knocking and text banking and phone calling. And he's like, I just, uh, you know, wanted to, um, to, I didn't want to, you know, kind of screw it up uh, for all of these people who were believing in me. This is a first, this is a first time candidate. Um, and, and so that's how you wind up with the, the kind of bland messaging that the, and, and the, so, and the, the tactical argument would be, you're not actually going to have a, a problem with turnout in that race. Like the re reason, the re reason to do really strong progressive messaging be beyond them to come out to vote. But with, uh, the enthusiasm that was around that race, turnout wasn't, and excitement wasn't going to be an issue. And it wasn't. There was massive turnout. It just happened that there were still more Republicans in that, in that suburb. So people can take what they want um, from that. But if you, if you combine that with um, seeing a pretty populist race that he ran this time around, I think that assuming that he and Warnoff do win, I think they're going to be pretty solid like progressive senators. I don't, I don't, they're not going to be Bernie Sanders. Um, not going to be burning the place down, but they're not going to remotely be like Joe Manchin. Like they're, they're, yeah. ne they're never going to be somebody whose vote you're going to have to worry about. And if you did rally support for Medicare for all to a point where the votes you needed for it to get it over the hump were Warnock and Ossoff, I, I, would, I would bet you everything that they'd, they'd be there with the rest of the party. But you got to get the rest of the party there first. You think... I feel like you think Warnock would also be anti or not anti Medicare for all, but like he wouldn't be a champion for Medicare for all. I mean, I guess he's too fresh and, and we are talking about the 11th uh, black Senator in American history. So it's not like in the first uh, from Georgia. So it's right. not like, uh, like, you know, he's probably not going to make a lot of risky maneuvers and, and uh, maybe be as a uh, radical as he was from the pulpit or from when he was uh, preaching uh, clearly, but, I don't know. I could see a coalition. Uh, maybe I'm too hopeful, but I, I, I've liked uh, Warnock. I think he's he's better than the rest of the Senate for sure. Rest of the Senate Democrats, or a lot of the Senate Democrats, rather. Uh, I would I would put him on the more progressive side. Also, more of a moderate, yeah, I, in I, my opinion. But I think they're I think they're both basically for it. There's just something about saying the word that that they for some reason is. Uh, stops them from from getting from getting all the way there also he's up for re-election in two years um whereas because he's only filling out the term of johnny isaacson who uh so he you know he's he's gonna be a, he's gonna immediately start campaigning sucks for him uh whereas ossoff assuming he wins he gets six years and he could be senator for life uh because you know six six years from now if, if the demographic changes we're witnessing now uh, continue to unfold, it's Georgia's going to be a blue, like a solid blue state, the, the same way that Virginia went. And there's this wild dynamic that you see, that you saw unfold in Virginia, you've seen it some other places too, is that when the Republican Party goes from competing in a swing district to being in the minority, and, and a bunch of the reasonable-ish Republicans switch and become Democrats, the ones who remain are just complete nut jobs. And so the Virginia Republican Party has gone from like a you know, fairly moderate party 10 years ago to just filled with complete maniacs now. And so they're completely uncompetitive uh, statewide in Virginia um, because in order to win the nomination there, you just have to be as crazy as you possibly can. Uh, and some complete nuts have, have won statewide nominations in Virginia recently. And I, I could very easily see the same thing happening uh, in, in Georgia, where, you know, two, four, six years from now, the, the Georgia Republican Party is, is just you, you, like a, a, a QAnon cul-de-sac that, that it can't compete statewide. You think Georgia is going to turn into that? Uh, that's what you're saying? 
potentially it's with like I think it's quite possible. Donald Trump's talking I about how he's going to It has all the ingredients. Yeah, cuz Donald Trump is also talking about like how he's going to play kingmaker and how he's going to literally right. uh work against uh Brian Kemp which is ironic cuz you know Bri he thinks Brian Kemp is crooked 